All right. I think, I think we're rolling, Hannah. All right. I've just spoiled the surprise for those on the podcast as well, because I've just said your name. But anyway, um, welcome to another episode, everybody. Um, I am joined by a very special member of uh, my evolution team today, Hannah Brooks. How, how are we doing? Yeah, all right. Thanks. Enjoying the weekend. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Do you want to tell the listeners and watchers on YouTube um, a little bit about who you are? And what yeah, you so I'm Hannah. Um, I live in North Wales with hubby and toddler who is two and um, dog Lexi who is three. So um, we've always had the, the two of them together. So we've uh, had a toddler growing up around a, a puppy or the other way around. Mm-hmm. And Lexi isn't just any ordinary dog, is she? She's not, no. Lexi is a Belgian Malinois. Um, and Sam, that's husband and I, are both first-time dog owners. Um, and a Belgian Malinois is not a normal first-time dog. And any dog trainer that I speak to that I tell that to that I'm a first-time dog owner, they're like, really? Why did you do that? Um, but I didn't, what, like, you know, you know me now, so you know I'm not someone to um, do things by halves. And I, I didn't want to spend 10, 15 years on a practice dog. <laughs> I wanted to get the dog that, that we decided we wanted. Um, so we did. We threw ourselves into it and um, yeah, got a good dog at the end of it. Yeah, just seeing the work that you guys do. I didn't actually realise Lexi was a first dog for you. So yeah. that you know, we didn't have dogs growing up either. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I thought I thought people getting like a shepherd or a, like a, a breed like that would be hard enough. But a Belgian Malinois, you put the shits up me. <laughs> when, when I, I want a working dog I'm like not yet not yet a lot <laughs> but yeah the work you do with her is absolutely phenomenal um do you want to tell us a little bit about Lexi as as on the whole um and some of the things you're working on perhaps uh yeah so she uh, is a, a high energy dog and a very driven dog so she will work non-stop she'll play non-stop um which is great if you're wanting to to work or play but you do need downtime um and i've had to do quite a lot recently teaching her to be more calm and happy to plod along on walks because now sometimes we have to toddle on walks um so yeah we, we've gone through lots of different um sort of phases almost with her um so like when i were when we first got her when i was pregnant it was very much doing all of the the basics training and making sure she had a good recall um, so that we could let her off the lead and explore the countryside around us, which all went really well. Um, like she, uh, you know, she's very trainable, so she got that. Um, and then when um, my little boy was, was very young, we just used to walk in the countryside a lot. He'd be in a sling carrier, so we used to be able to have lots of different adventures. Um, and so she was getting lots of walks when I was on um, mat leave, lots of adventures. Um, but then I needed to yeah, slow her down and, and bring her down a little bit so that she would be able to just mooch around. She was never very good at um, walking on the lead because she was always pulling to wherever she was going to get let off the lead. Uh, so we really had to kind of go back to basics and um, almost retrain. We kind of had a year or so where we didn't really do training with her. I was one of those where I probably thought, okay, I've, I've trained her. She, she's fine now. Yeah, there's, there's aspects that we always kind of manage. Like I always thought, oh, no, because of her breed, like if we're out on a walk, she doesn't want to stop and hang around. We have to keep going all the time or um, things like this. But now I know that actually that doesn't have to be the case. That's because of, how we were with her like we were always on the go so she never really learned to chill out and settle um and having a high energy high energy high drive dog doesn't mean that you have to be on the go all the time you do have to work them mentally and physically but that's not always got to be go 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 so we do a lot of different things with her now compared to what we used to do so just going back to that time then, so you said she was quite active. Um, when did you start noticing that things perhaps weren't as settled as you'd kind of want them to be? 
Um, well, I think I only really addressed it because um, during lockdown one, um, we basically got some issues then and I decided that I wanted to work on them. So um, because she'd always be going out on, you know, a couple of good walks a day. And back then, um, not knowing better, it was throwing balls, chasing, 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 running around because, you know, I thought that she needed the exercise. Really, I was just making her fitter and fitter and fitter so that she could run faster and faster and faster. Um, and so then when it became lockdown and we could only go out once a day, um, I would sort of do something with her um, morning and evening in the garden and that would be like throwing balls around, running around kind of stuff. And the one walk that we'd get to go out on, I'd make sure that she was like, go, go, go to try and get her energy out of her. Um, and I'd do some sort of training activities with her as well to try to, to tire her out. But it was a lot of, yeah, very like try to, to, to run to tire her out because she's only getting this one walk. Um, and that one walk that we used to go on, she's now got um anxiety of that car journey she doesn't in any other car journey but that one she does um and we got more in-house and garden barking um which just like there's nuisance barking and then there's problem barking and it become problem barking um like we've got a neighbor whose dog whenever they're out in the garden they're barking and she would be jumping at the fence barking um and so when we first met you was the conference that was at the end of lockdown one it was like a coming out of lockdown conference that had um, some other speakers and Karen Boyce was one of those and she knows Lexi um she's like we've done one of uh, her training courses and her doggy socials and her shop is where we get all of Lexi's food from um and we were talking about the, the garden barking and ideas for addressing it and stuff. And Karen said, knowing Lexi, she's probably always constantly over aroused. And I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> um, OK. And uh, she just happened to have hurt her paw recently. So, right, OK, let's take this opportunity. Let's do a walk detox. Let's not, not go out at all. And just let her like empty the bucket and let that arousal come down again. And kind of since then have just basically rebuilt so that she's not just go, 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 but she can have that arousal as well, but it's just better managed. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think getting arousal out, not out of a, a Malinois, if you like, but it's always there, isn't it? Yeah. They're just a breed that. I love watching because you can literally get up and they can come from asleep, can't they? Boo, what are we doing? Um, interesting, interesting. Um, yeah, Karen Boyce, she's she's been on the podcast before. If anybody wants to listen to her episode, it's under the German Shepherd one. Don't ask me the title of it because I can't remember. Um, <laughs> very knowledgeable chat. Interesting stuff. So you did this detox. You listened to the conference and you took you were a good participant in the conference as well if I remember right uh, you were there posting your videos and stuff what parts of the um mental activities if you like did you learn did you enjoy that you continued um so particularly what we've continued um so off the back of the um that conference we like some of the speakers then went on to do other things um, and one of them was the scent work course that you hosted so we went on to do scent work because I was like right okay if I'm not going to be running a ragged um physically then I need to think how else I'm getting this energy out of her um and so cottoned on to the fact that scent work can be really tiring um so we went through all of the the training videos um, and I think you'd already been running it for a good few months before um, a few of us joined late. So there was loads of content there. Um, so learning uh, first that there was like a, a short course to begin with that was more tracking kind of stuff. And then we moved on to searching for Kong and the catnip scented um, toys and gun oil. And we just sort of went through that process. And that's something that we still do now, um, particularly Kong and, and catnip. Um, squirrels as we call them um, so really kept up with that 
And we also did um, another course that was more about reactive dogs, um, just so I could try and understand more about why Lexi was reacting in the garden. Um, a lot of it was focused on reactive dogs out and about, um, which we do get occasionally, but not regularly. Um, so I'm still getting to grips with why she does react if we're out and about. Um, but yeah, so then that was like a whole nother phase of learning, just finding out about this world of reactive dogs and what that means. Um, and yeah, there was definitely a period where she became more reactive because I was more reactive. Just once I had my eyes open to this other world of dogs that, you know, don't want a dog running up to them to say hello, like, you know, no dog should do that. And um, just made me real, like so much more aware of what Lexi was like out and about. Like she is very toy focused. So most of the time when we're out and about, she'd be not caring about any other thing that was going on around because she'd be interacting with us. But when we were trying to bring her arousal down, we basically did a complete toy detox. So then I was like, okay, so how do I keep your attention out and about now? And for a while I, I was like, okay, well, I can't use toys with her because that just gets her to arouse. But then I realized now I need toys because that's her primary reinforcer. So I need to be able to have that way to get her engaged and get her attention. So instead of just, we use the toys differently and I've helped her to like basically control her arousal better and come down from it quicker. Yeah. You've taught her controlling that woosah and just that bit of patience before. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fab stuff, fab stuff. Um, lots going on there then. And like we do an achievements um, thread in the forum, don't we? And I always look at your list I'm like, wow, you're just, you're just doing so much with her, aren't you? But it's, it's paying off. And yeah, I, I need, I need the variety as well. Like I get, get bored just doing the same thing. So while that might be really good for training, like I know that repetitions work, um, I have to have more than one thing on a go because yeah, otherwise I wouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, I totally get it. And I think variety, as they say, can be the spice of life and just picking and, and choosing little bits and stuff. And Lexi's the kind of dog that like gets it, doesn't she? You know, you can really fast track with her. Um, what was I going to say? I, I didn't realise that Lexi had an issue externally with reactivity per se. So sometimes, yeah. So sometimes um, traffic um, or sometimes sometimes other dogs but it's only ever um on lead so I, I think it's like a lead frustration thing and it's very situational so sometimes she can be like this close to another dog and they'll just sniff and walk past each other other times the dog can be the other side of the street and I don't know it looks at her funny probably and she's barking lunging and I've got to move her away uh -huh. It's, that's interesting because I, I knew about the traffic obviously you've mentioned about the traffic um and I have seen posts on the on the lead stuff but before that I was I didn't realize it was more of the garden stuff that you were struggling with in the in-house um do you think that the on lead barking came after she'd had that off lead time was she interacting with other dogs as a youngster was she like did you say she yeah so she definitely had too much free play as a youngster um yeah we I like I used to go out for walks and be like oh I hope I find another dog for Lexi to play with while I'm out on my walk because I like I knew that just chasing balls wasn't a good way of exercising but I wanted to make sure that she had enough exercise and running around with another dog that that's great exercise surely um so yeah I used to be really happy if we found a dog that she played with when we we're out on a walk and she used to go um for pack walks as well when I was working so she'd get picked up every day and taken off for an hour play in a field with a load of other dogs um mm -hmm. so yeah so she used to think that every dog was was there to say hi to um and when she's off lead she's almost better because she's like oh well I know that you're going to play with me and that's going to be just as good as saying hello to another dog whereas when she's on lead it's hard to be more interesting than the rest of the world yeah you pick up on a great point there because um i think it's very easy especially when it comes to barrier frustration is what it is with the lead in place the dog knows that they can't get to the thing that they want to get to it can make it a little bit more difficult can't it um so interesting that you picked up on that 
what um i had a question for you and it's completely gone why don't you talk us through um some of the some of the progresses that you've made with because you 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 joined the con in fact let's backtrack a little bit you joined the conference and you went into the tracking didn't uh, the tracking course and then onto the scent work course and you're like a course junkie you've done a load of stuff haven't you? <laughs> i can't even remember what i did last year um but you're now a member of evolution do you want to tell people a little bit more about perhaps why you joined that what sort of things you like or, or dislike i don't know um <laughs> tell me <people laughs> more about it um so yeah so there was various different um kind of courses or content that, that you shared um so there was like a garden barking one and um th there was just lots of videos like the, all the stuff that you did through lockdown first lockdown when I wasn't in your group as well we sort of backtracked and saw that lot um and I just knew that I wanted to keep on this sort of like learning journey doing more with Lexi that was that wasn't just walking a load um and I'm now in the situation where um it's difficult to fit in a couple of walks a day because particularly when hubby's away and he works away for, for blocks at a time once Oscar's in bed, then I, I can't take her out. So I have to have lots of options for keeping her engaged and like worked physically and mentally just at home. Um, and so, yeah, so that's why I wanted to join Evolution to keep learning, to keep training and engaging her, her better and to, to keep making progress. Like I, I am still working on um, the in-house and garden barking and we do still have occasional reactivity outside that I'm still figuring out um why why it happens um and so evolution is great for that because there's loads of training content that I can work through but also like just a great space to to share your progress and to see what other people are doing and to support each other um so definitely really appreciating that and um all the group that's going on the group's um, really sort of like lost my the, the group is just fantastic yeah. but i think we've got such a great community of sorry carry on i just i just went no off. no no I, that's sort of like where, where my thought just pieces out just thinking about the group and how good they are yeah yeah i think we both went the same then <laughs> oh the yeah. group if I can edit in like two love hearts here, and just <laughs> yeah, that, that would be our mindset then, wouldn't it? It's just, yeah, it is just a fantastic community. Um, oh yeah, but that's what you said. Talk through, talk through progress. So particularly the the in house and garden barking one. So like, it's hard to remember how things were, um, and uh, like people always say about keeping a barking diary. I I always struggle because even like if you write it on your phone or whatever, like I'm doing a million other things and. I'm never timing how long she's barking for and stuff like that. But it got to the point at the end of lockdown one where she was barking so much and like we've got low windows. So she'd be putting her feet up on the windows and looking out the front living room or she'd be jumping up at the back door, which is clear glass patio doors. Um, so we put up that um, sort of hide it stickers so that you can still get light through but she couldn't see through um so it must have been bothering us a lot is is what I can tell from that because now it it must be so much better because I'm like why why is that a problem um so we completely covered those up but we we still had barking and we were trying different things and a lot of the things I was doing was just more trying to sort of mentally and, and physically tire her out but she's still like She's, she she doesn't mostly um, just bark for the sake of it. She's replying to barking um, or particular noises. So, you know, we live in a, a quiet village, but our road is quite busy in terms of dog walking traffic because there's lots of countryside paths just off the road. And we've got various neighborhood dogs that bark as well. And Lexi just likes to have the last word and she'll reply and keep going until they stop um so we sort of have our monthly if we, if we want them that much um training calls with you where we can talk through an action plan so we started um doing a training her like a, a really strong send to place that so was a send to her bed in the living room because that's the furthest from 
the kitchen, the patio doors, and the main problem is the dog that lives behind us when they come out and bark. Um, so got the centre bed solid, and then we're like sort of adding in um, a toy reward. So that if she went to the, the the place, and then we're trying to pair it with barking noises. So that if she heard barking noise, then she'd run to the bed. Um, and she was doing really well with it, but I have kind of let it slide a little bit because I've just gone instead now. That that I feel like that got her over the first hurdle. Um, but now I do a lot more of if I hear anything that I can tell that she's heard, then I'm just saying good and just rewarding. So you hear it, that's fine. Or if she does a little grumble but doesn't go into a bark, then I'm like, good, here's your reward. And just like literally a piece of kibble each time. Um, and on Tuesday last week, we took down the stickers off the back patio doors, which is very exciting because I can now see my garden again because um, I've been off work this week. So I knew that I'd have time and it's hard work because you just have to be on it all the time. Like that's the problem with within house or, or garden barking. Like you can't be like, right, OK, I'm going out for a walk and I'm going to train this. Um, so, you know, there's times where I'm just like, I'm just shutting the curtains or there's times where, you know, next week when I'm working, I might just be like, right, I'm just going to put the stickers up while I'm working again. Um, but yeah, so far she's making me feel like a bit of a mug for putting them up in the first place which is brilliant that's great yeah yeah it is, it is you're right in-house in-house barking is a lot harder to deal with than externals because we've got stuff to do in the house haven't we, we yeah. can't be on the dog all of the time so i completely get that um did you have a little did i see a post as well where she was settled in the garden with a bone or something yeah yeah if she's got a big bone she's more than happy to chill out outside yeah, and yeah. if there's not other dogs barking um we're now loads better with the garden barking as well like I can go like she just has to have something else to do yeah which is fair enough um but if there's barking around and it's the sort that she would bark back to if I just go and kick balls around with it she's just holding a ball in her mouth and looking at me kicking balls around so she's hardly doing anything but yeah. that's like that's great I'm doing something that's better than barking um so actually today the other dog was was barking in their garden and I was like well I want to go in my garden so we just went out and played with balls in the garden and she coped and she listened yeah fine yeah. she's like yeah I'll come out and play mum progress progress in it yeah there was I think I, I remember when you were coming back to the scent course you were trying to do some work and she was like kind of veering off yeah yeah oh. she, she does still fixate on the the place where we can see the next doors door so uh -huh. we can she knows if that door's open then the dog's out so she will still stare at it so we do quite a bit as well of whenever she breaks her gaze from that I'll, I'll mark and reward a bit of disengagement yeah fab stuff fab stuff um loads going on and I, I love the progress that you guys have made like I say I, I enjoy looking at your videos and seeing when you post and seeing what you're up to because you're an ambitious you're an ambitious person I don't know you that well but from what I've seen of you and from the work you've done, what do you do for a job? Um, conservation education. Conservation, so your wildlife? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I asked that question. It just randomly came out. It's just, you seem such a knowledgeable um, person. And like you say, you the stuff that you do with Lexi, because you do other stuff as well, don't you? Do you do agility? Uh, what other stuff do you do with her outside of... Um, so yeah, we do agility. So since she was about one, um, actually, since my little boy was two weeks old, wow, <laughs> um, we started agility. Um, so yeah, she, oh, she was about so one. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were meant to go the night that he was born. Um, so I was messaging the the trainer who had never met yet. I was like, sorry, can't. I don't know what. Well, I was in labour, and I said to Sam, I was like, Sam, you need to message the agility trainer and tell him that we can't come and then two weeks later we did go um so yeah we've done agility classes with her um and yeah so over this latest lockdown I've started taking her to a field that, that just had agility equipment and I've been able to like take her through stuff on my own so that was really good feeling like I've got those skills to be able to to show around and it used to be that she would um jump up and, and mouth like my hand and my arm a lot with frustration because I wasn't directing her right 
Um, and definitely I've got better at directing it, but I think also all the work that we've done on arousal control, like she doesn't do that at all anymore. And she used to do agility for food rewards and she now does it for toy rewards. Whereas for toys, I didn't used to be able to get a simple sit out of her because she'd be like, oh my God, give me the ball. Um, whereas now she can run an agility course, like doing all the different directions and then get a ball, ball reward at the end of it. Um, so that's made like that, that extra control has made a big difference there. Um, so yeah, we do scent work and we're also like one of the particular skills that, that I'm training her from the evolution content is um, competition healing, just as another thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. That's it's because you and Hunter were doing it. I thought, oh, yeah, okay, we'll do that. Because you've not got enough on. Shit. <laughs> well, it, it, it's something that I can just do at home, yeah. which is what I need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if, I'm, if I know that a lot of her daily engagement is going to be through training, then I wanted something that was like a slow burner that would just take time to, to build in. Yeah. Um, yeah. I also like started that. some um, canine conditioning with her as well wow like the list I don't know if you've seen that mem where he just like opens the scroll and it just keeps going and going <laughs> that's how I envision you and Lexi um fab stuff I want to pick up on this physical and mental part I know we've this is pretty much the whole of the the topic but I think it's important for uh, people to learn as well so like I bang on a lot about mental stimulation um and that you know that that that's like my go-to for for settling dogs down for building confidence etc but it is quite important that a dog gets a balance of both isn't it so we spoke about obviously you did a massive detox which was brilliant for Lexi because of it was just being go 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 whilst introducing the mental stimulation but it's a fine balance isn't it because you can't just have a dog like Lexi or a breed like Lexi or a driven dog like you know just do mental stimulation work can you which i think is where it's nice that you've got this you know you go on big hikes with her you go on agility tell us a little bit about that balance did you did you struggle to find that level where she'd be right or did you find that it was sometimes sometimes too much of this and, and not enough of that etc well definitely like even within one walk we can still have it where it, it gets tipped slightly wrong um but i remember we had one of our training calls where i was saying how um off lead like she's got a really good recall, but I don't want to be constantly recalling her. I just want her to naturally be a bit closer to me um, when we're when we're walking along through a woodland or whatever. And she'd, she'd be basically like the distance of my long line, but she wasn't on the long line because that's probably the distance that she had all the time when she was first on the long line. Um, and so, yeah, we talked about using different rewards and, and sort of keeping them always close and at that point I think was when we were still in like I hadn't started using toys because I was like well I can't use toys because then she's going to get too aroused so reintroducing toys and using them differently on walks is how we've made that balance um, in terms of arousal but then some situations are just still too arousing in terms of her like having the right control over it so we were down at a river um the other day and fetching something from a river is like boom up here in terms of arousal for Lexi so she like I think fetched one thing and then we were down at the river I had Oscar there as well he was that's my little boy so he was toddling and um she started ripping up an old log which is a displacement activity for her so she's like I can't handle it I'm too excited so I'm gonna rip into something um so it's like okay you're chilling yourself out maybe like maybe this is enough but then she started attention barking so I was like right no you need to come away from the river um but then obviously Oscar didn't want to come away from the river so I'm like oh so I had to handle that but I handled it fine and so we went off um away from the river and just did some karma things so a um, little bit of tracking, finding food, um, scent pad, that kind of thing. And then we we're actually able to go back to the river and then do another calming thing after it. And at the end of the walk, we like passed other dogs, met other dogs, saw other people. And like, so I, I could tell that she was calm enough because all of those greetings were, were calm without any sort of bounding or barking. Yeah. So yeah, 
yeah so you you're kind of finding still finding the balance and you know these things can like change from day to day as well can't they like hunter woke up with a I'm just in a right dickhead mood if i'm honest to put it bluntly <laughs> it's just you know when they just get a little bit like testing and pushing stuff um obviously there's a reason for it but i think sometimes like we have days like that where we're probably a bit tired or grumpy or whatever or overexcited the dogs can kind of have this as well can't they so um yeah and also they feed off us yes yeah yeah i was probably so either if we're overexcited <laughs> or if i want a lazy day then lexi says no nope. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe I woke up in a foul mood and he <laughs> picked mm. up on it. Um, interesting stuff. Have you got anything else that you want to add, Hannah? Um, you think anything that we've we've missed? Mm. We could go in many different mm. angles here, can we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's other things. I'm sure there is. Um, and I'm trying to think we've kind of covered about Lexi, some of the things you've been doing um the progress that you've been making um is Wales out of lockdown yet as well because I need to book you in just on no, not yet. side note I need to book we're, we're allowed to go anywhere we want inside Wales but no one's allowed to come into Wales ah, okay well keep me posted on that and then we'll get you we'll get you booked in and I can actually come and meet her how exciting yeah. would that be um yeah because we came to um a training that you held once but you had to go off for another <laughs> training so you yeah. didn't get to meet Lexi Craig, yeah, that was Craig's workshop, wasn't it? Yeah, play yeah it was a play workshop. That was it. Yeah. How did you find that? Let's let's chat. Yeah, about yeah so that, that was good. So yeah, what I wanted was basically I want to use toys. You can see she's mad for them, but I want to, like we've kind of said, be able to use them and then come down from them again. So yeah, just some tips on doing that really, and using them as a as a recall aid, which is what we do now. Mm-hmm. Craig's amazing, isn't he? He's back yeah. again. Um, the 11th of April I think he's back um did you take a lot away from that workshop yeah definitely yeah just just ideas again for building that control and um that well self-control is in her self-control um so yeah we we do a lot with toys now where it's not just release 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 it's okay there's the thing that you want do this 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 okay now you can go and get it yeah behavior mm-hmm. for the reinforcement after yeah Love it, love it. I always say um, that Hunter's got absolutely zero drive for toys unless it's, well, unless he's on one of those days. If you really could just, like, get me a needle full of some of... Oh, literally, it is overflowing, so I will happily send you some. <laughs> probably fuel all of my dogs and, and she yeah. will have enough. Um, brilliant. Well, I don't think I've got any other questions to ask, Hannah. Oh, would you recommend Evolution? Yeah, definitely. Like there's just loads of training content and everyone who's in the group is working through different things, like either different um, problems that they're trying to address or they're just trying to bring out the the best in their dog. And there's there's different content that suits different people. And for me, the best part of it is the, the community in the group. So you can you can always ask a question and either get feedback from the group or, or get comment from yourself. And that way, you know that you're not like getting lost down a rabbit hole, thinking that you make that you're doing the right thing, whereas actually you, you could be being quite counterproductive. You can correct things straight away and get ideas for, OK, this is the problem. What would you suggest? Yeah. And yeah, it definitely helps having like minded people. Um around you as well doesn't it because I think well I was always taught if you surround yourself with lazy people you become lazy if you surround yourself with active people who are are doing stuff then you become like those people not that you're like that because you already had that drive in you but Mm -hmm. on the basis isn't it but definitely it keeps you thinking right okay I'll I'll do something or I'll share something whereas you might just you know get stuck into a rut otherwise yeah easy yeah easy done easy done. and the days and the months just fly by don't they Mm. um cool yeah a year since lockdown one isn't it isn't it mental I was I can't think who I was talking to um but I said it's kind of like gone fast to the point where we can say it's been a whole year but Mm. at the time it was a massive drag I was like can't go out it's 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 just been so weird hasn't it weird year um that's the point actually what um did you did you find lockdown difficult I know you spoke about having the um the outings with her but did you find it difficult having a really driven dog through lockdown yeah it was 
particularly lockdown one, <clears throat> just because I didn't know how to do enough for her or I thought that I needed to to get her energy out. So um, that that actually brought out more of the the barking and the the anxiety in the car journey and stuff like that. Um, but I didn't know sort of how to stop that because I was like, well, I can't stop taking her on walks. Um, whereas I'm now confident, although I still can very rarely bring myself to do it, that, okay, I don't need to go for a walk today. I can do this and this instead. Um, and then it, it was difficult just in terms of being around all the time. So she, she's, you know, I'll, I'll regularly go out without her, but she's still not having or re is rarely having whole days where she'll only get, you know, someone coming in to see her briefly. Um, so just not having as much time to sort of rest and actually get some sleep or also just be used to us not being around. So we'll just have to make sure that when we're all out of the house more regularly, that we get her used to that again. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that, yeah that's a big thing, isn't it? For um, a lot of dog owners, I think, I think that'll be a problem that could easily escalate but thankfully you know uh you know where you're at and you're a forward planner for sure aren't you um brilliant right well we'll leave it there hannah thank you very much for um giving up some of your time and sharing sharing your story with lexi really it's an absolute pleasure to have you as a team member um and yeah thank you very much no worries thanks for having us take care everyone and for anyone who's listening on obviously the podcast or the youtube if you want to find out more about evolution and then simply head to the website www.freests.co.uk and that stands for three steps to silence not any sort of transmitted sexual disease right <laughs> thank you very much i'll speak to you again soon bye bye